All right, good morning, everybody. This is video number Trey's for the engine rebuild of the SRT4 OEM Plus. So we are going to do the um, the oil pump uh, video today, and just basically how uh, for one the sheet tells you how to do it. For the other way, how there's a specific way you want to prime the oil pump. I'm gonna to get to that point. I uh, just want to let you guys know that. So I know there's been some kind of videos that are uh, not the greatest. So. Um, Let's get started, uh, and hopefully you guys like, subscribe, and comment on the on the on the page. I appreciate all the likes and comments and everything. It it really helps us out. All right, guys, make sure that uh, once you're doing this, that everything that the mating surface is cleaned. Obviously, uh, this has been machined, so it's been cleaned there, and then also you do some brake clean to make sure that this is cleaned off. Um, I took the keyway out of it, but we have to put the keyway at the very end. Make sure that the uh, engine is top dead center, which in this case it now is. Um, so once the engine is top dead center, then these are your oil bolt holes, these are your oil passages, all that good stuff. So uh, now that we know that this is clean, let's move on to the second step, which is um, priming the oil pump and getting it ready for installing what I use for it. All right, guys, so now we're going to... We're to the oil pump side. We have to start getting everything reassembled. So now the other thing that we have to do, first thing we have to do is prime, prime the oil pump. By priming the oil pump, you're gonna avoid getting any air pockets, any air bubbles when you first start up your engine. When you first prime your engine, you're not supposed to start up right away, but when you first prime your engine, you wanna avoid any uh, air pockets, anything in there that can be cause any kind of dry start. That's what we wanna avoid. By doing that, there's really two ways I've seen on the forms, uh, just the service sheet. The service sheet just tells you to prime it with oil. If you put oil in here, all you're going to do is just the inside galleys in here for the oil galleys. The oil is just going to drain out. You want something that's going to be more, um, that's going to stay there for, uh, for until the actual startup. And now I've been using the Amsoil um, assembly lube and it works great. But for this, how I'm going to do it is just use like the, the grease, the assembly grease. And I believe this one is a, a white texture, whatever the case is, but it's it's um, it's a lot thicker, so the consistency is going to be able to stay in here and be in, and be primed a lot longer than using either a semi lube or oil or whatever the case is. So this is just my take on it. I feel like this is just a lot better than just squirting oil inside of it because I feel like that's not really doing anything because oil is going to drain out by the time that you want to get it started. And having the the grease is actually going to be thick enough, the consistency is going to be perfect, so that when you put it in there. Um, that it's going to be money, that you don't have to worry about it, um, you know, draining down everything. And you really want to put it by the, uh, the pickup tube side, which is where it's going to be sucking in the oil anyways, which is right here. Um, so there's really two ways I know how to do this, is to take these off, uh, prime all the gullies, so that when it's primed that there's no air th circling to the system. And the other way is just, you know, priming it through here, make sure that, you know, you stuff some grease in there. I'm going to go the... Uh, I'm gonna go the other way and take these off and then just prime every single one of the gullies to make sure when they're the startup, everything's primed. Also keep in mind that this will dissolve in your first uh, in the first initial startup when the oil warms up because it's assembly lube. It's not bad. It's you know it's meant to be meant to be used this way. Obviously, when you do your first rebuild engine, you want to run the engine for a little bit and then you change it right after that with you know you're using conventional anyway, so this oil is gonna get changed out anyway. So the whole point of you know changing in the first five minutes or ten minutes of its life is to make sure that anything, a semi lube or anything that's in there is changed out accordingly. So I'm gonna go do that. Once you do, well, let me add one more thing. Once you take these off, you want to put them back in. You have to tighten these up to uh, I believe it's what is it? 118 in pound, 118 inch pounds all the way, and just make sure you kind of go this way. Don't go all the way around. Just make sure everything is seated correctly. 118 inch pounds so we're gonna prime the uh, oil pump and once we prime the oil pump we have to put our, our oil seal it goes to the block right here and then um, you can use a little bit of just grease just to hold it in place but I think that'll be just fine with just itself just sitting in there and then uh, you want to use the, the gasket material when I say gasket material this is what I mean this stuff we've been using this stuff this is what it's recommended to use it the anaerobic I would not recommend doing something like this now this is good stuff but just for this case this is not the stuff you want to use so I'm gonna use the anaerobic put a beater on here make sure the gasket it's in there oil is gonna be primed uh, oil pumps gonna be primed 
then we could start the assembly process of the oil pump to um, to the block. So stay tuned for that. Okay, our oil pump is primed. We have our gasket there. We have our RT, not RTV, our anaerobic there. And I just put enough. I mean, if people think I put too much, then I put too much. But I want to put the perfect amount. So obviously our our uh, pump is primed. I thought it was white. It's actually black, which is no big deal anyway. It's the same shit. So all right, here we go. There's a little um, flat spot right there and right here. And the same goes for the old pump and the inside to make sure that those not just kind of fit right where they need to be at too. Okay, also there are, I believe, four long bolts on the oil pump and then three short ones. You got your one, two, three, four long ones there. And then you got your three short ones here. Alright guys, now that our oil pump is installed, um, we just want to make sure we torque them down to 20 foot-pounds. And then just, I would like to, you know, I don't know if it really, I don't think it gives you like a speck of exactly how to do it. But just when you torque it down, just, um, you know, I would go like opposite way to make sure that everything is in, is in, is in order. Now we're gonna go either all the way around this way or around that way, however you feel like you wanna do it, just to make sure everything is 100% torque to one. That way I know it's marked. And just if ever, I know if it ever moved. All right, that part's done. Now we can get to uh, getting the seal on. Got to get the keyway on. And we got to get the sprocket on. And then oil pump is almost done. All right, the oil seal is installed, guys. And the reason I installed it, you can install it. Uh, I've heard from multiple sources, multiple people, that they don't oil these seals and just kind of give it a, you know, go dry. Uh, and then when installing this, there's a specific tool that you can buy, or you can be like me and get a 32 mil axle socket, and if it's perfectly in there with the keyway off, literally perfectly in there, give it a tap, slowly give it a tap, and it'll seat itself perfectly in place, and you should not have any leaks. So that way you don't have to buy like the actual Molpar seal tool, and you don't have to go with a socket or something to try to squeeze, or not a socket, I'm sorry, uh, extension or something flat to try to and then possibly damage it so um, 32 mil socket works perfectly okay seal is installed we have to put the keyway back on 
All we did was set it in place. Now we're going to set the keyway back in place. Keyway is set. So now we're going to put our crank sprocket back on. And then that means, let me get over here and show you, that, that keyway right there, that notch, goes right there. And we have to make sure that it's this way with the front. And I painted that white right there. You want it to match that. Can't really talk because it's gray and white, but it's right here. There's little air right there. <clears throat> so you pull it in. You want to press it in. So, another thing I want to bring up. The gap between the front of the oil pump to the back of the sprocket has to be around 32 thousandths of space of clearance between the two here. So when we're pressing in the the sprocket and we want to make sure we press it in nice and slow and that we have this feeler gauge here that has to be around 32 thousandths. We don't want to get it too close or it's going to tear into the seal. Uh, we want to make sure it's around 32 thousandths per spec. So I'm going to set this here for right now. Right now right there. I'm going to set there. I'm going to start get my uh, installation tool to put this on. Which brings me to my point. I've heard of guys uh, get like a 24 millimeter suck and tap it in place. Please don't do that. The reason you don't want to do that is you have inside your, your engine, you're going to have thrust washers or thrust bearings. And knocking it back and forth a couple times, you're just asking for problems. So the tool I have that I bought it, I believe the company is called Freedom Tools online. And it's it's the spec of the Mopar one, but it's not a Mopar one, but it's literally the exact same thing for half the price. And I'm not going to kid you, I think I paid 60 bucks for it, and I think the Mopar one is 130 some dollars. All it is is just take this nut off, thank you, thread in place, and then you basically use the bearing to tighten it down and push the socket in place. I'll set it up and I'll show you how that works out. All right, guys, so how we use this tool is I put my uh, my spacer here, like the big uh, cylinder. Then I got my washer, my bearing, my nut, and then uh, my bolt at the end. Once this is all the way tight, or as best as you can get it into the crank, then all you gotta do is tighten up this nut, and it's basically pushing in the sprocket into the crank, into the keyway. And um, all we're doing is push it in really slow. You can put a little bit of lube around the crank just so that there's no friction. It's going in real slow. That's what she said. <laughs> nice and neat. That's basically what I'm doing. money 32 thousands all the way around okay now we just remove the tool sprocket and everything else uh, keyway sprocket oil pump primed torque to spec to 20 uh, the last thing we have to do is put our pickup tube in but we're not going to do that just yet because we're going to wait till we do the oil, our oil pan and all the other stuff that goes with it we'll leave that to the very end we can do it now but realistically i got something else i'll need to put on before i do the pickup but right now uh life is good and you officially did an oil pump so i hope this helps you guys out um, and then we're going to do the water pump next all right, guys, we're going to install our DCR high flow water pump on now. High flow water pump is going on.
This here also gives you brand new bolts. You can use the old bolts, but I mean, they gave me brand new bolts, why wouldn't I use them? Okay, water pump bolts are torqued to 105 inch pumps. Me, I like that Marco shit. All right, guys. From the start of this video, we talked about what we had planned out, and hopefully, what by the end of the video, you guys should have been able to understand how to install a water pump and a old pump on an SRT4, and what I did, the tools that I had to use, the my way of doing it. Um, and hopefully it helps you guys out when you guys do these. Obviously, this is outside the engine. It's a little bit more different, different when it's inside the car. But I hope this got. I hope this helps you guys out. Um, hope you guys like this this content. I see that you guys do like this content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Um, I think the next video we're gonna do the oil pump. Or sorry, the oil pump, the oil pan, and some other stuff. That is in the bottom of the old, uh, the old pan. Then I think for the short block should be kind of done. And uh, that's it. So hope you guys love the content. Thank you guys so much for all the love support. Me and Val appreciate it. See you guys in the next one.